Alrighty, in this video, I'm gonna show you why Google Sheets is probably my favorite educational tool, period. And I'm gonna do that through Google Forms. Obviously, you probably know by now that Google Forms um, creates a sheet of responses. So I'm gonna show you in just one little quick fractions ticket just how powerful Sheets is. So here I have a problem of just the simple addition of two fractions, but they have unlike denominators. So the first thing I want to illustrate is as teachers, we can anticipate our students' misconceptions, right? So I don't need to wait for formative feedback to know what students are probably going to do. I for sure have students who are going to add the numerators and then just add the denominators straight across. So I have that captured in one of these responses. It's a, it's a wrong response. It's incorrect but I know that some students are gonna do it. I also have some other common misconceptions. A lot of students will just keep the second denominator and add the numerators or, or you know, conversely, they'll just keep the first denominator. The correct answer would actually be finding a common denominator in this case, but I'm just gonna, for the sake of this problem, I'm just gonna select one of these incorrect answers and submit. So I know on the back end, I had that create a sheet And here we go, I have, I have my one response so far, and I selected A. I also created two extra columns, and this will, this will link to one of these sheets down here for misconception and then link. So in a misconception column, I have some common misconceptions. So like I said, if, if a student selected answer A, that referred to the choice of three ninths, well, they just added the numerator and then added the denominators. So the misconception here is that they added straight across. The misconception for B would be they kept the larger denominator. C was the correct answer, so there was no misconception. And D is if they just kept, they added the numerators, but they kept the smaller denominator. I want to address these misconceptions, right? So next to that, I created another column for intervention or extension, because if my students got the right answer, if they didn't get a misconception, I still wanna be able to extend something to them. So here, I've just created links of videos or math forums that solve or, or at least address those misconceptions that students could refer to. So I'm gonna go back into my form responses, and I wanna make sure that this maps according to that response. And I'm gonna do that with one formula. It's probably the most underutilized formula in Excel or Sheets. Um, not a lot of people know about it, but it's incredibly powerful, and it's called VLOOKUP. So to do that, I'm just gonna click a couple times in this cell. You start every formula, whoops, not with the plus sign, but with the equal sign. And this formula is called VLOOKUP. So I'm gonna type VLOOKUP, and then open up my parentheses. And when you do that, Google Sheets is nice to you and tells you what it's looking for. So the first thing it's looking for is the search key. And in this case, well, in all cases, what the search key is, is sort of your reference, what it's going to use to match to sort of another database. And in this case, I'm searching based on their answer. So I'm just gonna select this cell. So based on what's in C2, it's gonna search. Then I'm gonna put a comma, and now I'm going to identify the range in which it's searching. So the range is the set of data that will contain this response and then return me something that I want. So I'm actually gonna to go to my misconceptions tab down here. And the range that I want is all of this stuff. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And you can see it's saying misconceptions A2 to C5. So A2 all the way to C5 is my range. I'm gonna put another comma there. And now it's looking for the index. And that's basically saying, what do you want to return? Well, it's searching for A. I don't wanna just return the answer back. I already know that. What I wanna return is the misconception. So in this case, um, these are numbers based on the column. So this would be one, because that's the first column in my range. This would be a number two, or these columns would be number three. So I'm actually gonna select column two. So in this formula, I'm searching for C2, which is the answer on my original page. I'm jumping over and searching for that on my misconceptions page and it's returning that second column. And when I click enter, you can see that it matched this response to the misconception that I had. So now I'm gonna load in a bunch of fake data and show just how powerful this is because it's one thing to do that with a you know, classroom of one or one response. It's another thing to show the power when you have all kinds of responses. So if I just drag this down, I'm actually going to get an error. 
And the reason I do that, if you look in the formula, it's changing the range as I go down the sheet. I don't want the range to change. I want it to keep searching. Eventually, it gets into these NAs because it can't find anything in that range. I want it to always search within those cells that I had specified. So to do that, I will lock this in with a little dollar sign. So if you put dollar signs on the, on the column letter and the row number, a dollar sign before each, that's um, identifying my search as something that I just want to fix. I want it to just stay there. So I'm going to keep that. Now I'm going to drag all the way down. Whoops. I don't need to go quite that far. And you can see now the VLOOKUP is looking in this column and returning the student's misconception next to it. So that's, that's important and that's valuable. But the real valuable thing is, remember, I had associated with that misconception, I had a link either to an extension activity or to an intervention that hopefully addresses that, that error. So I'm going to just do the same thing. I can take this handle and now move it to the side. Notice, though, what changed. These are the exact same formula, except for my C2 turns into a D2. I still wanted to search based on that answer. So I'm still going to search based on C2. The only thing that I'm changing is I'm not taking the second column in my data. Now I'm taking the third because remember those links to those activities were in the third column of that range that I had. So now when I do that and fill it all the way down, it's giving me a link for every student. So I just showed in about five minutes how with a, with a class full of data, I can address student misconceptions and even extend um, activities for students who got the right answer really quickly with this tool. There's a ton of other formulas, obviously. Excel and Google Sheets are incredibly powerful, but I really think they're, they're underutilized and they're, that's why they're my, my staff pick for the day.